Good afternoon, uh, everybody. Um, it's our Thursday delight, and uh, we would like to start at two thirty with Joakim. Hi, Phone. Good afternoon. Happy Thursday. So, excuse the mess, yeah. Excuse the mess. So, let me turn down the volume of this. Okay, turn down already. Oh, Joe is here. Yay. So, while we wait for Joe, I will keep calling people to come in. So, the purpose of uh, Joe sharing today is a lot of people has the wrong mindset when it comes to what it takes for you to get ready into international cross-border e-commerce, especially to the US market, the Europe market, and also Australia or even in South America market. So, Joe, uh, Joe Kim has been, um, he himself has been a successful seller, uh, selling onto Amazon platform and eBay platform. And Amazon has so many continents um, uh, and eBay also has so many um, uh, 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 countries that you can, you can, you can venture. It, it depends on your product. Uh, what, what product do you sell? What product do you, uh, do you intend to sell? Because like me, when I was an eBay seller, I cannot sell to um, I cannot sell to people in Australia, uh, but I can sell. Uh, I can yeah, it's Thursday study day, uh, but I can sell to people in Europe, America. Also, I don't focus a lot because uh, why I focus into Europe because it's currency wise it's higher. Okay, so currency wise is much more higher. So at two thirty, uh, we're almost at two more minutes. Uh, we will invite Joe. Uh, Joe is the is the is the channel partner for both Payoneer. He's the ambassador for Payoneer and also a channel partner for uh, eBay and Amazon. Um, but today we are not going to discuss about your eBay or Amazon account. So let's set this straight. This is to set yourself ready. What does it take uh, when it comes to food? The FDA you have to get it set. You have your barcodes, your products, and all. So this is what you need to uh, go. Right now, I need to see whether Joe is online. Then I can call into Joe. Then uh, Joe can uh, proceed with uh, his uh, presentation slides. So I cannot find Joe. Joe, I cannot find you yet. Yay! Hi. Hi, hi, hi. <laughs> Vera, let me turn on my volume, Vera. Where is my volume? Yeah, this laptop. Ah, okay. All right. Can can see, can see okay. me clearly? Can hear clearly? Yeah. Can see your face, your handsome face. Where's your kids? <laughs> kids are, are locked uh, at the bottom floor for now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay. Now tell the crowd what are they going to learn today before you share your screen, yeah? Okay. So uh, basically. As we know, um, a lot of companies have been affected by the pandemic and, you know, uh, business has been pretty uh, bad for the past three months and four months and everybody's doing all they can to just uh, move out into the ecosystem. And uh, during this time, uh, as a service provider, we are able to access uh, different points of data, right? Different points of data, different points of view as well. And I thought it was very insightful because it paints a different picture than what um, everybody else is saying, that it's all uh, doom and gloom, right? There's a great opportunity right now uh, for brands and uh, manufacturers and sellers to go global, to go direct to consumers around the world because of the pandemic. So I assume that I'm speaking to brand owners or those who are looking to sell their products, right? And I'm going to share with you, number one, the thought processes. Number two, what are the issues and the benefits and the drawbacks of the pandemic, how it affects an export-based business, what are the digital ecosystem tools that you need to implement uh, in order to maximize your potential in this time and effort, uh, at this time and day, right, after the pandemic. And then also uh, understanding the flow of how a digital customer converts. What we believe, what we read, and what actually happens are two different things, right? So I just want to share with you that thought process and it's more of a top level uh, company owner, brand owner, uh, business owner kind of uh, 
conversation that we want to have. So I'm not going to train you on technical things. You know, I'm not going to show you, oh, click this button, click that button to do this one. Or you can Google and you can find out and you can learn yourself. There's no point that we as experts come here and tell you how to click a button, right? So let me just add value to your uh, thought processes as a business owner because what you can think, what you can perceive is what you can implement and act on. So that's essentially what we want to share today. Okay, so, Good. Uh, so now you can share your screen, right? Yeah. Perfect. So now you go to your mode. Ah, correct. There you go. Ah, I learned well. Okay. okay. You X this black box. X the black box, uh, Joe. All right. Okay. Ah, okay. See clear. Is yours. Yes. All right. Great. Again, so let me introduce myself uh, to those who don't know. Uh, what we do, again, I'm Joachim Sebastian, uh, one of the founders of Everpeaks. We are an e-commerce managed services provider and soon to be technology platform uh, that specializes in creating export sales channels for brand owners. We are the only uh, Amazon service partner in Southeast Asia, uh, eBay channel partner in Malaysia and the Payoneer uh, community partner for Malaysia as well. Uh, we our core business is to help brands expand to the global marketplaces, especially the US, uh, France, Germany, Italy, Spain. We do this and we also do a lot of uh, information sharing, knowledge sharing and supporting the government agencies when they need uh, input with regards to these export platforms. Now a bit about my background, I started off as a seller seven years ago. Uh, we're in the automotive and interior decor category as well as the uh, automotive parts category as well. So as a seller, we have learned the best practices, we've implemented it, we run our own platforms and we also run platforms on behalf of other brand owners. So today I'm going to share with you uh, some of my key uh, learning points uh, with regards to taking your e-commerce business cross-border, especially amidst the coronavirus or the COVID-19 issue. Okay, so today we're going to talk about these five things. First, an introduction. Uh, which we had a bit of just now. Then we're going to talk about the shift in consumer behavior. Uh, and again, the perspective on this is the global markets, especially focused on the US market. Yeah, so that's our specialization. Uh, we're going to talk about forced digital adoption for survival. We're going to talk about uh, something that is the vision of Everpeaks, which is manufactured to consumer commerce. Uh, we believe that this is the wave of the future. And uh, we talk about positioning your company for global supply. Once this is done, um, I'm going to, I don't know if we can take questions, but you feel free to type it out and we'll try to address it directly if I can answer it or if not, you know, we'll reply via text. Okay, so I hope this is a insightful session for those who have joined. Please um, share it within the groups that you're in because this is uh, something that we don't do so often because again, it takes a bit of time, but I thought it would add value to the ecosystem and again, as our partner with MDEC and all the other agencies we hope to continuously uh share what we have especially when it benefits uh, local players right in this time and age we, we need every single edge that we can so what has happened uh in recent times again you'd understand that first uh the covid 19 pandemic which started in china mm, this pandemic not only is causing an effect now it actually uh was affecting uh, e-commerce business players uh since uh, december last year right since December, when China was uh, getting to be affected, it started the shutdown, supply chains were disrupted. Uh, companies that usually sell thousands of units per day left, uh, were left with warehouses that were empty because, you know, there's no inventory. And uh, essentially, e-commerce businesses around the world, not just Malaysia, were in a massive uh, lurch in terms of getting the supply, right? China is one of the, the global suppliers or the global factory of the, of the world. And next, once that happened, uh, we also went into a recession because of the pandemic, because of issues, because of the oil glut and a few other things, right? So a global recession occurred. That means a demand and, and, and people took a conservative position when they're making their, their purchase decisions. On top of this, as you said, the China manufacturing lockdown affect the supply chain and uh, recent times, the global oil glut. So when the global oil glut happened, the oil and gas industry, which is a large spender, has literally shut down uh, because it compounded by the factor of uh, the COVID-19 uh, causing everybody to stay at home and nobody was going out in their cars and, and, and the supply was far, far uh, outweighing demand. So people, companies had to pay to dispose of excess uh, crude oil and things like that. So that dropped the oil price down. 
and because we as a country malaysia is highly dependent on oil revenue right tax revenue and oil for our economy we are also affected so it's like a quad factor a, a disaster of uh, epic proportions so just to contextualize uh, the covid issue is something that is a once in a century kind of uh, pandemic where it is so infectious and and so disastrous to the economy that it is affected almost every every country out there so it, it's such a big disaster now what has this done so you get countries who are in lockdown uh, however when you see these countries in lockdown something to note that the e-commerce and logistics supply chain was still retained right in countries such as italy and and um and spain where you had almost a thousand people dying every day they still ran their e-commerce division they still had amazon spain running they still had amazon italy running they they tried to focus on essential goods to ensure that the supply chain is not overwhelmed but it was still running uh, so essential supply was uh, emphasized even in the us and also besides this you see that come countries including our own uh, started issuing stimulus packages germany was one of these in the forefront where they issued a a huge stimulus package that essentially saved their art scene as well so they were much more inclusive where other countries did not take the entire spectrum and they tried to save whatever they could in the uh, critical critical sectors of the economy so all these things have been happening in uh, the pandemic and what that has that led to right the first thing is that there is a complete shift in consumer behavior. So what do I mean by this? Uh, the e-commerce uh, percentage of total retail in US, you can look at it over here. People say e-commerce is taking over and is wiping everything out, but that's not actually true. It's only uh, 601 billion out of uh, a total percentage of more than 4.3 billion, right? Uh, where you can see e-commerce versus retail displayed over there. Only 16% of purchases in US are based on e-commerce. But because of COVID, uh, and now we recently have the data as well, this 16% of purchases actually grew to guess what? It went up to 27%. So that's a span of 11% in eight weeks, if I'm not mistaken. Eight weeks, it grew 11%. So what does that mean? And how long did it take to actually grow 11%? Did you know from 5% to 16%, it took US 10 years to do so. So that's 11% growth, 10 years. And because of COVID, it grew another 11% in eight weeks. So that's literally an explosion of growth. And what this does is actually, it gives access to a new demographic available now to be marketed to more platforms and also a higher comfort level uh, of consumers with digital so you get these two massive populations that usually don't want to participate in e-commerce number one the tech resistant right the guys who say no big data i won't want to publish it no I, I refuse to participate i only use what i need to i try to support retail and then of course the older population which is not so tech savvy um they're not very um device uh utilization heavy as well but because of the pandemic, what has happened is that these two populations had to come on board just to survive, right? If you can't go to your grocery store, you still need to buy food. And that has brought these people into the platforms. Now, once they are on the platform, it changes the entire game where you are going to see a lot more comfort, a lot more comfort, a lot more familiarity. And once they're on the platform, they're not going to go off. Most of them will stay. So I don't think it's going to stay at 26% in terms of uh, e-commerce retail, but it's not going to drop back to 16% or 15%. It'll probably stay in the 20s region. And that itself is a massive market to now uh, hit with new products and new services, right? So there's an opportunity there. Now, part two, forced digital adoption for survival. Now, this is related to companies, right? Um, a lot of companies could not actually um, take advantage of the shift in the ecosystem because they're not prepared digitally. So I just want to share with you some of the, um, the key points of what companies should have as a, as a um, I guess, a digital asset base, right? So the first thing you need to have is, again, a brand.com, meaning this is your brand site. Usually it's a domain that has your product or your, your brand listed. You also should have a Google My Business registration. You must interact with Google Search Console 
you have to have payment gateways such as Payoneer. You would like to have a marketplace presence on platforms such as Amazon. And then on the left hand side, you're looking at content where you have Facebook pages or Instagram pages. So this is an example of a very simplified digital ecosystem. Now, how many of you have this implemented? I would say in my experience, rarely more than 15 to 20 percent of companies, if not a lot lesser. So I just go one by one. Uh, Brand.com is a website. Facebook is a Facebook page. Instagram is an Instagram account. Amazon is a marketplace that occurs on um, seven to eight different countries. So Amazon France, Germany, Italy, Spain, and the biggest Amazon US. Payoneer is a payment gateway that allows you to take your sales from Amazon and transfer it back to your bank account in Malaysia. Uh, Google Search Console is basically a tool that Google allows to uh, get you discovery to get your discovery metrics. So if you want to get organic search rank on Google, the search console will show you where you place and what you can do. So it's, it's essentially a tool for search engine optimization, right? And Google My Business is a discovery platform where you get to place your business onto Google Maps and also have a lot of different criteria and act like a, essentially, um, it can even be a website actually, Google My Business. So these. Um, seven components are, are the basics of what you should look at and there are a lot more, right? So how many of you have implemented this? I'd, I'd like to know, just say, you know, uh, I've done six out of seven or five out of seven and, and, and we'll have a conversation about this later. The next thing I wanted to share with you is about how digital really works. Uh, something that I've always seen when I talk to clients or talk to entrepreneurs who are trying to uh, make their way in e-commerce is that they always look at, I'm going to pay ads and I'm going to get sales, right? So what's my direct ROI? What is the amount of spend versus sales ratio, right? Your, your ad uh, ROS, return on ad spend. But that's actually not the way digital really works. The first thing that you want to do is number one, to earn the right to talk to your market. Now, what do I mean by this? Earning the right to talk to them. Sorry. The internet got disconnected. Uh, I will try to dial into uh, Joe again, yeah? Sorry, Joe. Dialing into Joe. So you have to continue the part where you said about the payment part, I think. Sorry, Joe. <laughs> oh, yeah. I was going on and on. Um, <laughs> where were we? Where were we? Payment, is it? The payment. Uh, the payment part, yes. Yeah. So what did you talk about? Part. The payment slide. Payment so slide. You, this one we're paying here, right? You reach Okay, so I'll just redo you reach, this slide. You reach your slide. Yeah, you reach yeah. Where are I got internet internet intermittent connection? Oh, yeah. Very it bad. has to be on your side, is it? Not this slide. Uh not this slide. This one? Which slide was it? X, the message bar. Ah, this one, this one, this one. Oh, Lord, that's a lot. How digital <laughs> really works. That's like... Oh, this one. <laughs> I saw, I saw the one was hanged. Can I go ahead? Yes. Part this two. the one, right? Ah, uh, yeah, this one. Okay, great, great. So um, let, let's talk about how digital really works. So when I'm showing the slides, they can't see me, right? Okay, fine. Uh, we, we, we'll go with this first. Let me see. Um, hold on. Okay, great. So uh, let's get back to this slide, how digital really works. So the first thing I talked about is creating content to earn the right to speak to your market, right? We presume that everybody wants to listen to what we say as, as business owners, but that's not really true. So by creating valuable content, by creating uh, engaging content, you earn the right to talk to them. So if they click your content, they've given you the right to talk to them. And then you move to the next stage of the funnel, which is uh, to show them value. And that's where you give them either a coupon, an ebook, or something that gives value to their daily life or why they're interacting with you. So for instance, if it's us, we uh, provide them a free um, report or probably a, a free consultation call where 
we'll try to understand their business and give them some advice whether it's suitable or not so that's something that we uh we can do right to show them value and once you show them value that is where you give them a chance to support you by be- making them uh, an offer or giving them access to a special deal and they become customers most of the time what companies do is that they spend money on ads at the front of the funnel on the top of the funnel and they expect to get sales directly and this usually does not work right so for e-commerce sellers you want to be able to bring your customers or walk them through a journey that um, number one allows the uh, the essential learning of your business the essential sharing of what your business means to them what value you can bring to them first and then they convert later okay so that's generally the journey so start with paying money to actually earn the right to talk to them by boosting content then show them value then give them a chance so this is all different kinds of cycles that you must uh, implement in your business rather than just uh, paying for ads that convert directly to sale okay so the next part i want to talk about is manufactured to consumer commerce right so i'm gonna these are four separate topics that i, I really feel a lot of passion for especially uh, this particular one our vision uh, as everpeaks is to establish uh, manufactured to consumer commerce in southeast asia and then globally we want to actually bring manufacturers direct to brands sorry uh, brands and manufacturers direct to their consumers around the world so what is this uh, m2c commerce that we're talking about so uh, in my experience seven years uh, running an e-commerce business i believe that this is the new wave of the future number one um, consumers are now no longer willing to just talk to a distributor or a dealer right if they want to buy a product they want to have a brand association they want to have their values being um, reflected they want to make decisions with their money they want to support brands that you know re- resonate with them and not a middleman next uh, because of the globalization margins are getting slimmer across all categories uh, production cycles are getting better things are getting more efficient competitiveness is high so it, it it does not allow companies to operate at the old uh, margins anymore next the distributor bottlenecks now if you are a new brand coming into any country you will definitely be competing with some sort of distributor of a different brand and if they are big and they are strong they will stop you from coming in uh, and this is something that most new brands need to overcome by using m2c commerce going direct to consumers through marketplaces through your website through uh, digital marketing you bypass distributor bottlenecks and lastly globalization right so now no longer can you say oh i'm just competing with malaysian sellers no it doesn't work that way you're competing with sellers from china indonesia singapore you know whichever country that participates in your particular category you will compete with them and no longer are you able to say i'm protected because i'm within the 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 four walls of malaysia globalization will take your business away if you don't implement change now m2c commerce is definitely one of the ways to go that can actually overcome this issue now how does it work right so generally you look at brand owners and manufacturers uh, they sell to distributors distributors are regionally controlled uh, at 50 percent retail price distributors then sell to uh, dealers at 80 percent and dealers then sell to consumers at 100 percent so you can see the discount rates there and the issues with this is that number one if you're a brand owner that's working with uh, distributors that are distracted, they have too many brands, they are going to inhibit the growth of your brand because they're not focused, right? They're not going to be spending money growing your brand. They expect you to spend money and they will actually restrict your growth. Next, again, powerful distributors of competing brands, they become barriers. They reduce your market access into different countries, into your own country as well. Thirdly, many layers, as you can see here, there are four layers so just by removing the distributor portion of the business you save 50 percent in costs and if that can be affected into the consumer uh, portion they'll be glad to get a 30 percent uh, savings and the manufacturer can actually enjoy another 20 percent additional profit right uh, the last one is again increase handling time because you've got so many layers it actually increases the ability for consumers to get the goods around the world now m2c commerce actually overcomes this by cutting out the middleman right you're going to get 
brand owners and manufacturers selling on marketplaces, on websites, and to the dealers, and the dealers then sell to the consumers, websites sell to consumers, and marketplaces sell to consumers. And if you look at the makeup of e-commerce, marketplaces actually function like dealers, right? Amazon fee, what's the Amazon fee? It's 15%, right? What's your dealer distrib- your dealer discount margin? It's between 20 to 30% as well. So, you know, you are able to leverage on these um, platforms to provide a pathway direct to your consumer. That's why we call it manufacturer to consumer commerce, M2C. And this again provides additional 50 to 80% margin for brand owners and manufacturers. So this we believe is going to be the wave of the future. Now, one of the things that, uh, sorry, there's a word cut off there, is that because of the pandemic, what has really happened is not that demand went away. Demand's still there. What has happened is that the supply chain collapsed because distributors are no longer willing to stock up on products at the previous rate due to the risks of having these kind of uh, uh, dead stock and you can't turn it over because of the issue. Uh, because people are staying at home and they're ordering in a different way they can't go to their standard retail stores and so on so traditional distribution has been affected however manufacturer to consumer commerce will be able to supply the demand directly through number one superior logistics as you can see the logistics um, ecosystem in the world has grown leaps and bounds because of e-commerce right the next point is true e-commerce through the global platforms through websites through marketplaces through um even uh, digital distribution channels, right? They are able to access this particular um, demand in the market. Finally, digital marketing is also another way that manufactured consumer commerce is able to uh, create awareness, right? You use digital marketing as a brand awareness, as a product awareness tool, or as a content consumption tool and create um, new markets or new access to new markets for brand owners. And again, in combination with uh, proper content, whether it's articles, whether it's video, whether it's um, TikTok, whether it's uh, Instagram, all these are different platforms that use different forms of content. So content marketing, uh, digital marketing, global platforms, e-commerce and logistics combined to actually uh, give you the pathway for brand owners to reach directly to markets around the world. Now, how do you position your company for global supply, right? So I'm going to just give you a brief overview of the three different segments. First, you look at discovery. So where do people learn about your product, learn about your company, learn about your offering? It, again, it's a Facebook page um, done correctly. It will create awareness. Instagram pages where you actually get discovery by hashtags, get discovery by tagging, get discovery by story sharing and so on. And also Google My Business, which provides local discovery uh, opportunities as well. From discovery, you convert them to a sales channel. A sales channel could be Amazon, eBay, or Shopify, whichever suits your purpose and suits your business model. And finally, both the first two segments don't mean anything unless you actually have a method of getting your product to the customer, which is um, essentially a fulfillment solution. So for us, we use uh, DHL Express, one of our partners, and um, you have many other alternatives uh, based on what your business actually is, right? So these three components actually give you access to the global market. Now, it is up to you as a business owner to make sure that the criteria, the pricing structures, the cost structures, the risk plans, all that are in place so that you don't lose money. But with these three uh, different segments, you will be able to actually uh, supply demand direct to consumers in other countries. Right. So something that I wanted to share is don't get misled by sentiment. Uh, this is a piece of data from one of our clients during the middle of the pandemic. So you can see like this is a uh, 9th of March till the 6th of April. Uh, Malaysia was in lockdown. France was in lockdown. Italy is in lockdown. Germany was in lockdown. USA also locked down. Spain also locked down. But sales were still increasing. And this particular product is not an essential item. It's nothing related to the medical side. It's not, not PPE. It is actually an automotive part. So, you know, if you uh, believe the sentiment out there in the market that everything's uh, stuck, nobody's buying and whatever not, you actually lose out on the opportunity. A lot of that is actually um, fear-mongering. It's a lot of fear-mongering going on, which leads a false impression of what the actual market really is and this is data on sales so you can't go away from that okay so this gives you a brief overview of what i wanted to share 
um, uh, just a recap. Number one, the pandemic is an unprecedented disaster. It is going to affect businesses all around the world, but it also actually creates a huge opportunity for export e-commerce based businesses. Right. Digital adoption has hastened globally uh, with the examples that I've shared about uh, US and companies actually now have to get digital to survive. Uh, in fact, restaurants have gone digital to survive during our MCO, right? And you know that there's so many new apps on delivery and whatever not to support the digitalization process. Uh, the next point is that global demand can be quickly met by M2C commerce where traditional distribution fails. Now, it's not going to fail forever. Traditional distribution will come back. Traditional retail is a core part of the human uh, purchasing process. However, we can expect an increase in percentage of e-commerce for sure. So when that happens, we've got a 10 year growth journey compressed into four weeks or eight weeks, right? So that's something that uh, gives a very, very large new market access to new products and we should take advantage of that. And lastly, again, uh, database decisions are going to be uh, more important than ever. Please uh, don't always fall for the public uh, sentiment there are a lot of niches a lot of separate categories in the world that you know um are actually increasing in sales rather than suffering and you know they're going to keep quiet because they're not going to say so much about it it doesn't look nice right but it is there people are making money there's a lot of opportunity um evaluate if this is something your business can take advantage of and i hope that whatever i've shared with you earlier gives you some form of structure to think about it okay uh, lastly again we always uh, share our pay when you offer uh, if you register with our code at the bottom there uh, you would get a 25 usd bonus when you load uh, 1000 usd into your pay your account now bear in mind pay when is a platform that is used to get your sales from amazon back to malaysia right it gives you a very effective rate it is a robust licensed and uh, uh, very very secure platform for your money so i've used pioneer personally for the past seven years i've been the brand ambassador as well for about six uh, six or five years and now recently we've moved to be a community partner for pioneer itself if you have any questions uh, please reach out to us at hello at everpeaks and you know we'd be glad to share some information or some insights or even you know assist you with some questions on the export market okay that's it for me and i hope that it was insightful let's take some questions right now okay okay um let me anchor. <laughs> oh, okay yeah. any up. questions anybody um yeah so joe is here uh, thank you, Joe, for that presentation. I'm using Payoneer as well for my Amazon account. It was smooth and all. The only thing that I'm always uh, asking Payoneer to help me is, where's my MasterCard? Where's my card? I can't get my card. So they're trying their hardest best to get my card up. <laughs> definitely, definitely. Just let us know. I mean, uh, I'll be glad to just send them a message as well. Uh, but bear in mind, uh, I can't do security-based activities. I'm not a, a pioneer staff, right? <laughs> I don't have access to the database. I can escalate for you to the team that manages this for sure. Yeah. All right. Any questions? So, what no, no is questions? uh, who are, who are the clients? Who are the clients that you help right now? What is the uh? What is the most uh, ideal, uh, when it comes to brand owners, ideal products to go into, let's say, Amazon USA? Mm. Okay, so actually, there's a huge range of categories that are perfect for Amazon. Like, uh, for instance, a huge category will be interior decor, um, gifts, uh, fashion is a massive category, um, even electronic goods. But I would, you know, be careful about electronic goods because of the local uh, compliance requirements, right? You need to have a different voltage and stuff like that. Um, um, handphones, mobile phones were also a huge category, but the real question is what's feasible from Malaysia, right? That's the that's really why where you wanna wanna position this. And in Malaysia, we've got a lot of cultural uh, products, a lot of cultural products that are not digitized properly. So if you're a reseller and you're looking for opportunity to grow a brand, you've got to find a niche, a category that you specialize in and search for sourcing of these said products and build a brand. For me, I would always uh, promote brand building versus uh, trading on a direct method. So trading is going to be very, very um, 
tiring number one number two you very very risky in terms of margins unless you build it with you know 50 percent 60 percent margin off the go but there is opportunity to do that mind you there are places where you buy for product x and because we are malaysia we have the cost so low and our manpower cost is so low that you can sell it to us cheaper than they buy it themselves there because you got the forex currency rate right so the the, the key um element here is not about choosing the most lucrative category you are best in and being good in that category okay. understanding the unit economics right that's actually more important um oh there's some questions over here watching hi carol and joe to begin i need a good product right um to begin you need a good product product must have a market right somebody needs to actually buy the product so if he sees your product, he must understand what it is. So representation of the product needs to be accurate, the pictures, the description and all that. So um, you really want to um, choose the product, represent it correctly. And to a certain extent, some brand owners actually build the market for their product. It's a new product, it's an innovative product as well. So the more that the, the, the market understands your product, the lesser work you have to do. So for instance, if you sell a Nike shoe, yeah, people are going to know they're going to buy it, right? But if you sell a uh, uh, joking brand shoe, uh, you got to make sure people understand it's pretty awesome. And secondly, of course, you got to make sure that it is awesome, right? If you sell a product and you say it's awesome and, you, and when they receive it, it's rubbish, uh, you're going to get a, a quite a bit of uh, backlash. Okay, so uh, next question. I've got one question. Sure. Um... If you, if, 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 you, if you can hear me la, because the internet is quite bad so mm. what about um you know there's amazon usa there's amazon mm. uh, mexico and there's amazon australia is there an mm. amazon singapore for us to sell onto amazon singapore yes there is there is uh, amazon actually uh divided into a couple of categories based on the location so you've got amazon uh north mm. america amazon canada and amazon mexico in one uh group and then you've got the European Amazons, which is uh, UK, Germany, France, Italy, Spain. Uh, and then you've got the Southeast Asian Amazon, which is Amazon Singapore. And then you've got Amazon Australia. And then there are two more new platforms just launched, which is Amazon Netherlands and Amazon UAE. Right. So it's all multiple uh, different platforms. So for Amazon Singapore, it is already live. Uh, we have products listed there. Uh, some of our clients are already there. And you know, it, it, there are sales, so there's an opportunity there, but the platform is new. There are some modules that are not launched uh, yet because uh, number one, the COVID-19 uh, pandemic has affected their, their launch timelines. And number two, it is a, a, a brand new platform. So one of the modules is actually the, the marketing module. So you can't run promotions right now. You can soon, hopefully by end of this year. But once that is done, then it becomes another platform that you can uh, market your product to. What about Amazon okay. India? Any questions, yeah. anybody Am from the platform? Yeah. Wolfgang has asked a question. Amazon what about Amazon India. India? Amazon India is a bit of a complicated um, beast. I, we, you can't actually sell on it unless you have a local company in India versus the other Amazons, right? So Amazon Singapore, you can sell even though you're a Malaysian company and Amazon Australia, you can. Amazon India, you can't as of yet. So, you know, if you have an Indian company, good on you, you can participate. But we are uh, even we ourselves have not uh, penetrated into that market for Amazon India yet. So yeah, hope that answers your question. Oh, Amazon India. Mm. That's something new. Oh, India is a. I mean, it's a huge market. Uh, a lot of companies are looking to get yeah. into there, but it is also a very complex market where logistics, delivery, uh, service level is very very localized. It's much like. Um, it's much like Sabah and Sarawak to a certain extent, but massively bigger, right? So you've got weird addresses. You can't verify that items been delivered. So a lot of yeah. these things, you must know how it functions on a local basis before you participate in that market. I can't see those messages question and Joe can see it. Funny enough that you can see it. What yeah. about Amazon India? Okay, lo, already answer. So hmm. what about... Do you know in Malaysia? Let me ask you this. Huh? Maybe you don't know. Mm. Maybe maybe you know. Do you know in Malaysia? Yeah. Uh, who is who is the top sellers of Amazon that you know? What are they selling? 
if you know man <laughs> uh even if i did i couldn't reveal it <laughs> um, <laughs> which, which, which category of products that would be interesting well the guys that i know are quite quiet uh but uh i believe uh skincare is one of them skincare is one of them uh automotive is definitely one of them uh interior decor is one of them uh so these are categories that we do well in uh because our products are actually quite good it's just that we don't market it correctly and we don't represent it correctly online uh but besides this um even i mean malaysia is a hub for a lot of medical devices medical devices from malaysia go out quite strongly um and some of the companies over okay. here in the medical field are very well established they are recognized uh, players in the global field um however things that we don't do well um into the US market is food because of the regulations right uh, so not many of that go there but we've got tons of people selling accredited products like right? Nescafe and stuff like that and whatever not that tons of those so we've got a lot of retailers that are doing arbitration but in terms of volume and profitability I wouldn't say that they are the most profitable positions I guess it's, it's a it's a high throughput low margin game right you've got to play at the consumer level but you're selling thousands lah right versus the brand owner journey which is a high uh, margin low throughput game most of the time unless of course you are top glove or something like that lah we got cut off about the brand about the different products i'm going to call into joe again okay oh this what wow, it got cut off from there <laughs> That's quite a bit. Of, uh, <laughs> I was talking like for one hour. I didn't. <laughs> nah, just kidding. Uh, it's a different type of sellers going to Amazon. Yeah, mostly brand owners. Only only yeah, yeah. Mostly what brand owners. What about eBay? What about eBay strategy? What would you recommend for people who wants to go for eBay? Because eBay is much more easier compared to Amazon. Yes. I, I would actually recommend that anybody who's going new onto this export platform start with eBay first. Let's start with eBay first. Learn oh. how to sell on the basics because eBay is a much more kinder platform to you. Amazon, if you mess up the policy, you mess up the regulations. Nine out of ten companies further dig a deeper hole once they mess up by trying to create new accounts and doing all sorts of things to clean up all their backlog. Ah, it, it takes a few months, you know, because they created multiple IP addresses, multiple accounts, multiple logins, and Amazon auto detects, auto bans this this thing. Just because it flags onto one, so to clean it up, you have to clean one, two, three, four, and then you get to the root problem of why they got banned. You know, so that's how Amazon works. So my recommendation, uh, please start eBay first. Uh, do um, build your core data, do your compliance, uh, get your KYC there, um, get get an understanding of how the export platform platform functions, and then after that, expand to Amazon. Someone is asking, uh, can they sell slippers on Amazon? Oh yeah, yeah, definitely. You just got to make yeah, sure the price is done correctly. <laughs> Was that? Yeah. Branded lah. Yeah, but I would recommend footwear. Uh, you need to use it. Uh, hundred percent FBA because we've actually launched uh footwear before, and if it is not FBA, you don't get any organic traction. So if you're going to go into footwear, because you know why Amazon believes that in footwear, especially if you're an overseas seller, if they buy the wrong size, the customer experience is degraded because they want to return. They cannot get a replacement in time. So if it's FBA on Amazon, uh, the customer can return and get a new size with Amazon's processes alone, not yours. So you know it's a it's a known uh, returns process issue. Fashion footwear, these two are quite. Uh, mm. FBA heavy lah. If you want to get traction, okay. Hope that answers the question. So let's see who else got any more questions. We have a good forty three, forty four, forty five people watching this live. So that's good. Um, nice, nice. So nobody got questions. That that's it. We just um wrapping up. Yeah, uh, great. I, that was yeah. very good sharing by Joe. Mm hmm. What I've about, got what about eBay when it comes? What, Sorry, what about that? eBay when it comes to? What about eBay when it comes to selling food? Is hmm. that safe to go on board first compared to Amazon? It's not the platform which is the problem. The problem is the importation, which is customs. So Amazon and eBay don't okay. take liability for your compliance. The compliance will hit you back as the shipper on record. 
So it will not go through customs if you put bulk without FDA regulation. So they will need that that compliance portion. Uh, so the risk is you sell, you can get through small small parcels, yeah. But when you send a bulk, when you start actually selling correctly and you start getting traction, that's when you get stopped. And then they might call you up and you need to answer some questions and you know they might just return the shipments and ban your address. A lot of things can happen. So it is not sustainable yep. in the long term. Better you sort the compliance out before you start. Cool. Well, mm. that's it. We've already down to our 45 minutes of uh, presentation and Q&A. And remember, uh, Joe, I want you to PDF these uh, files. Uh, PDF mm -hmm. this uh, what you call presentation and then after that we will only upload at the cross-border uh, export with uh, Everpix group chat so mm -hmm. anybody anybody who wants uh, this uh, presentation slide and also Joe's uh, guidance into getting into the international platform come into this group chat uh, don't spam the go e-commerce chat uh, don't uh, don't spam go e-commerce chat you can spam on the, you can't even message him on the ladies group Joe is not on the ladies group um, Joe is not on a the e-commerce group. <laughs> unless, unless Joe has a lady staff that can join the ladies group, but Joe is also on the cross-border uh, e-commerce group as well. Wow. So, can you see my face? Uh, Joe, 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 I can beautify yeah, my face Joe using the app. <laughs> wow, that, <laughs> man! <laughs> now consider more lady-like a bit, lah. Beauty, a pretty, ma. No. Yeah, actually, no, Sunny, if you can watch, later you watch the playback. Okay, Sunny? Oh. Sorry, because uh, uh, hopefully the playback is not as uh, jittery and not, not not have all this intermittent uh, internet that was uh, we get to try to get connected. Okay? Uh, we know that there's a lot of uh, sellers. I sell on Amazon. Uh, a bit of a tip that Joe and uh, some of the Amazon sellers also guide, guided me into listing my first... 40 SKUs onto Amazon and I, I put up ribbons. So it's not my brand. It's not my brand yet. So Joe did advise me to come up with my own brand and all. So I did I did my first stage of uh, branding of the packaging, but I couldn't continue. Too much too much work. Work. Uh, not eBay. Well, not eBay, Amazon. Too much work on MDAC. So I, I, I couldn't continue. So Joe has been very, very good in pushing uh, pushing, so I can imagine him serving uh, clients and serving customers have been pushing uh, clients to get on with it because uh, yeah. I, I can't focus. I got too many things to focus. I, I don't focus on my, my business. I don't. And uh, 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 I, I, I've seen Joe uh, help a lot of uh, SME, uh, a lot of brand owners, especially brand owners. It's not for trading. Uh, Amazon is totally not for trading. I got, I got sales on Amazon, but I had to shut down my store, uh, put on vacation because there's no planes and shipment uh, going into the America at the moment, so just hang in there and 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 and, clo and, and don't don't operate first. So my eBay is closed, my Amazon is closed for the moment. Just concentrate on helping CSR some work here. And Joe, your final word when it comes to saying goodbye. What are your final advice? Um, I would say don't uh, believe market sentiment uh, public information is public information uh, always research be a scientist look for data test your products uh, and get your unit economics right so it doesn't mean you sell two million ringgit worth of products you're actually doing well a lot of times you see this guy selling two million they spend three million selling two million ringgit you know so um, a lot of rubbish out there lah. so just be careful about who you trust uh, the training that you go to a lot of frauds out there that give uh, e-commerce consultants a bad name that we've also interacted yep. with uh, try to work with people who have been validated uh, and accredited there are a number of them uh, kotak song is one uh, you've got a number of agencies in malaysia that help exporters right so kk is a good guy he knows his stuff as well uh, and there are a few of them in in malaysia but avoid the all these uh, gurus la, uh, that come out from nowhere we don't waste too much of your money because in the end you're paying them to sell their products they sell the products, you are getting a very, very small margin. Once Amazon takes his money, you're done. You know, selling on the expo market, you need at least 40%. At least 40% margin. If you don't have 40% margin, don't bother. 